Yep. Get All right, esteemed. Huh? I'm getting my flight suit. On the escalator? <laughs> These are our steps. There you go. <laughs> There's Universal Studios. You can see those. The Writers Guild is on strike. So we've got writers down there outside of NBC. There's the Sher Sheraton Universal. Me! What? There's the Despicable Me over there. The Minions. Woo! On Ventura Boulevard. Is that the writers for all the shows? Well, that's like five. Oh, here they are. Look, they're at the corner. Welcome, graduated seniors. <laughs> That's funny. How about that? We got the H and R Block discount. Ooh, upgrade at the gate. We have it on the phone. Studios. Oh, that's an up escalator. Ah, you gotta walk down. Oh my god. Oh, it's so scary. <laughs> you see that girl in front of me yesterday? Oh, look, there's the tram that they were talking about. Oh, good. It'll catch it. I know. It is a This is your first ride. <laughs> There's the Smurfs. Oh, Jurassic Park. Welcome of wild things. <laughs> There's Frankenstein. See now if we have stayed at this hotel. They said they climbed like two times. I tried like I tried a couple of times and they said they climbed. There's more of the Hollywood Hills. Oh, no, what? 
Rooms right in there. Hot topic. Ah. All right, there's the globe right down there that you see in all the sitcoms and shows that are shot there. Blake Shelton's talking to you. There's the globe. Oh, there's the Comcast Universal in the background. Universal Studio Star. Mm hmm. Harry Potter store. Billabong. Sounds like Jurassic Park playing. Does sound like Jurassic Park. There's Universal Studios. Oh, here are the third style. There are the ticket booths. We're going to go to the turnstile. Oh, we're not in the park. <laughs> pictures. We're going to go to the back and work our way forward. All right, show us. All right, yes, because I know. I, all right, so we'll know where it is. No, it'll be all digital. They'll bring right up. There's the Cat in the Hat store. This is very nice. This is, they just added this. This is their new Main Street. Oh, there's DreamWorks down there. Yep. Yes, yeah. Hey, Brad, Brad Bash. Yep. Hollywood and Dime. Oh, the Hollywood apartments. No actors. 
They never have one. Oh, see, Carl Lemley. Oh, my gosh. My girl, Marilyn. Yeah, but see up there, Carl Lemley owns these apartments. He was the founder of Universal. Illumination Studio Store. Hello Kitty's here. The thing I don't like about here's the problem. Graduate because they have actual events with the colleges here in California. Oh. Because they, they all come at once at the end of the day. There's Hogwarts's castle down there. Alright. Oh, it's Revan. This is very nice. I really didn't, I went in totally blind. I had no expectation. Not that I thought negatively, I just didn't know. Did you get your taxi picture? Look, it's $1.25 back in the 30s. It's a snowman stuck a feather in his cap and calls it macaroni. Here's the snack bar. Oh, it's the Kung, it's a Madagascar people. Woo! Hey there! <laughs> Enjoy your day. I want to see a sign for the lower lot. What? I want to see a sign for the lower lot. Yep. Hot popcorn at the movies. Tour de France. I just like an excuse to talk to people. That Harry That's Harry Potter. There's the Simpsons. So we're going to make a right at the Quickie Mart. The Quickie Mart is where Apu works. Springfield. Woo! There's Lord Lad with his giant donut. Yep. Oh shoot, what's the what's the policeman's name? Chief Wiggum. He said make a right or a left at the quickie mark. Here's Duff Garden. Okay. And here's Moe's. Moe. Where you get your flamey Mo, flaming Moe's. Here's the Simpsons ride. Oh. Did we put the ba ba da 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 da? Yes, we put the. Okay, here we go. Bump. That's the spring in Springfield. Bumblebee Man's taco truck. 
Jurassic World to ride. There it is. Hello. Universal Studios Hollywood. Thank you. <laughs> Ba, 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 ba. It's an escalator. We've no, no. already done three of them to get. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Here we go. This is the lower lot. Remember, we're in the Hollywood Hills. It's not flat. There you go. Like the one we went to yesterday. Move it! You like to move it, move it. Perfectly drive. Oh, wow. Kirk Douglas drive. There you go. This is from Madagascar. Yeah, because you can breathe it. No, that one is. I say this is the scenic view. The whole place is a scenic view. Wow. See, there's Nintendo Land down there. Look. Wow. Yep. It just opened. Brand new. It's the stages of the lot. So like, yep. Uh, we're on the back lot. There's Jurassic Park right there. To your left. No smoking, Julie. We got another round. We got another one. Here's Jurassic Park, the ride, or Jurassic World now. There comes the tram, the log flume. Look at what, okay. There's a store in here. Oh, there's free tasting games, photo ops. Well, let's go on into Jurassic World. What? And let's walk around to Jurassic World. If you don't want to go on the scary ride, you can go in the dino play. It's a little, it's a little I think it's a walk around thing. Well, I don't want to go on a ride. Okay. Oh, see, it's a. Oh, big steps. Big steps. 
Stretching out those legs. Look at you go. Getting limber. <laughs> Thank you. 
boards that will have a different kind of mouth and they'll have sharp teeth in there. Julia does not have sharp teeth. Then you've got what we call a dental battery. So picture a little bit of like our molar that we have in the back of our mouth. You've got a whole bunch of those over here. It's called the root of our mouth. It'll help her to grind up that food, make it easier for her to digest. Very good job, girl. Very sweet of you. I do not recommend doing this with any of our carnivores today. I see the love that.
or selfie of you with Blue. If you would like a photo with Blue, we invite you to join our queue along the water's edge. We'd love to get a picture with you. While you're taking photos with Blue, we will be studying her behavior to see how Blue socially responds to being around a crowd of people she is unfamiliar with. You can see how aware of her surroundings she is. As soon as the boat splashed down, Blue is touching the water. See if an animal is approaching from the water. If anybody does have any questions about Blue, please feel free to ask. I will answer any questions you have about Blue or any of the dinosaurs here at the park. <coughs> Velociraptors are pack animals who live and hunt in groups of 3 to 12. Okay. How are you, my friend? Because of their ability to work in teams, we've developed a deep connection between Blue and our team of handlers and vet techs. Now we want to see how she will respond to people she is unfamiliar with. Or Andy, I'm going to come right behind everybody. Yes, sir. Uh, you're not big enough, buddy. That is a very good question. Our guest is asking, what is a faster animal, a cheetah or a velociraptor? Now, a cheetah has been clocked at speeds, uh, I believe, in uh, over 60 miles per hour. Blue can run just over 40 miles per hour, which is incredible for a two-legged or bipedal animal. A cheetah is a four-legged, a quadruped four-legged animal, which gives them the advantage when it comes to speed. However, for a two-legged, bipedal animal, running over 40 miles per hour is incredible. Yes, my friend, how are you? What was that, my friend? Oh, great question. What is stronger, a T-Rex or a Velociraptor? Now, how will sheer size and power? A T-Rex has the advantage. However, Velociraptors are quicker, smarter, and work better in groups. So, if you have several Velociraptors, they might be able to take down a fully grown T-Rex. However, a Velociraptor and T-Rex never existed on Earth at the same time. They're actually separated by millions of years. Here at Jurassic World is the first time that they have actually lived so she's fairly young, but she is fully grown at this point. How are you, sir? Did you have a question as well? Did you have a question, my friend? You just, what was your question? She is incredibly big, you're right. And very loud, Paul. Oh, absolutely, my friend. Now, Blue is approximately two to three times the size of the Velociraptors. I mean, I've heard Larry yeah, not really. I mean, not anything that won't evaporate in like five hours. Huh? Oh, well, you're sitting in a boat that's been watered on all day. Was the last week down in the yeah. Right here. Y'all hit hard? Not really. You hit you hard? No. I hit the single rider, so we just came right over. Waited maybe. I mean, I got back here in 15 minutes. We got to see the dinosaurs. See, here's the Transformers. Let's see what the line is at the Revenge of the Mummy. Excuse me. Yeah, that's for concessions. 30 minute line. Here at Jurassic World, the Universal Studios Hollywood. We're about to enter into Nintendo, Super Nintendo World. Here's Revenge of the Mummy, the ride. And for, for you uh, theme park historians out there, this building used to house the E.T. Adventure. There's Transformers, the ride 3D. With the Studio Cafe. There are those escalators from earlier. And there's Jurassic World, the ride. Around the corner here, we have the Jurassic Cafe here in Jurassic World. And there's the ride. See, there are posters for all the things that are being shot here, all the shows at Universal Studios. And there's the Nintendo Shop. With your Jurassic World glasses. <laughs> what are you drinking? Beer. Beer. <laughs> okay. Let's go into the world of Nintendo.
Let's go to the right. Take from here. Huh? Take off here, right? Probably. A lot of people drink while they play video games. All right. I know, she said you go around the building, so let's enjoy your sip. <laughs> Yeah. Smell yourself right in front of me. There you go. Here's Starbucks coffee and Dryer's ice cream. Oh, <laughs> yep. No wonder my lines at the rides are so. Uh... <laughs> oh, look. The new guys out there. Oh! Oh, cool! <laughs> See all the posters? Those are all the things being shot here. I think this is the beginning of a beautiful friendship. <laughs> oh, I see signs for Super Nintendo World. This was for Express Pass. Be right there. Their scores are on the like the video game. They get the scores. Look at those turtles flying all over. Toad School Cafe. You have to vote for that. Huh? You have to vote for it. Oh, yeah, reservations.
until the Florida version opens. It'll probably be three times as large. Have a great day. that we were denied earlier. 21st century. Like, look around. So what you see what you're here for. Exactly. A mummy eats corn dog. Oh, there you go. Well, the mummy's got to eat something. Oh, look, there she is. Juliet, or what is that? Oh, that's... <laughs> you need your picture with Juliet. Oh, she likes to mirror behavior. Oh, she likes to mirror behavior. Take a drink of your glass. We're gonna dance. You already have that. Yes. Yeah. Here we are in Springfield. Here's Krusty the Clown. And look who's here. We got Homer right here. Here, let's go into the Quickie Mart. Oh, that's a chunk you say, remember when you I know! <laughs> I said that's the picture to send. There's a poo. Welcome to the Quickie Mart. There you go. I'm fine, but I, we are going to go get the Flaming Mo. The Flaming Mo at Moe's Tavern. Look, there's Lard Lad's Donut. That's cute. With the butt, too. Oh, God. Well, that was one of the big things about The Simpsons when it came out, that it, it was the first cartoon to have overweight Americans. People were so upset. That was one of the big scandals when The Simpsons came out. That was itchy and scratchy and Savage Little Helper. There's Dr. Nick Riviera. Hi, everybody. Unlicensed for over two Unlicensed decades. Unlicensed for over two decades. There are the cops. At the police station. Here's the DMV with Patty and Selma. Look, see, those are uh, Marge's sisters. You want to do the studio tour before lunch? All right. Yeah, you get the whole tour of the studio. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Oh, disco stew. <laughs> oh, see the the prisoner sneaking out of the window. See, these are all the vignettes. This. He's the host. There's Hogwarts Castle. Well, he hosts uh, tonight on the Tonight Show on NBC. In New York. Right. Right. See, Julie, don't be looking down. You're missing Hogwarts Castle. Castle. Oh, we got another escalator. Oh, another escalator. We lost her. There she is. See, she's always worried about losing me. It's nonsense. Hi, everyone. Go to the restroom before you get on the tour, Juliana. There you go. Mitchell? Maybe we should have worn matching t-shirts. We'll do that next time. Backwards once. It did go well. Uh, so let's give it up to our driver. Everybody say, hey, Chad. Hey, Chad. Very nice.
NICL. And as you may have seen, our co-host here today, also known as the host of The Tonight Show, or from That's My Jam on NBC, give it up for Mr. Jimmy Fallon. Woo! We made it. Welcome to the Universal Studio Tour. I'm Jimmy X. So please have those cell phones and cameras out for some great photo ops. Just keep an eye on them so they don't get wet. Well, lastly, for your safety and those around you, please don't use some selfie sticks or walk on board. That being said, y'all, we left the theme park behind. We entered onto the Universal timeline. Yeah, take a look to your left and right. You're seeing just a brief glimpse oh, of the 100 years of Universal movie making history. That actually started here way back when, on March 15, 1915 with a man named Carl Lemley, who's our founder. Now, he didn't just found Universal Studios. In fact, he founded the city we're in right now as well, known as Universal City, which is just like yours. Uh, as you can see, coming up on the right-hand side as we round this corner, this is our very own fire station, number 51. Uh, so yeah, not a set, no actors here. These are real firefighters. Uh, keep them safe every single day. We also have our very own sheriff services, medical services, Starbucks. Uh, we've got you covered. Honestly, the only thing we don't have in our city is residents, since we're 100% going to be making film and television around the block. Uh, now, as we continue down the timeline, we want to make our way down to the fourth block, which is where we're spending the first portion of the tour, which is broken down into administrative buildings, production offices, and the majority of our 36 sound stages here at Universal. It's actually where a lot of the action's happening. Uh, most of our projects will actually shoot about 80 to 90% of their work in the sound stages, since they are completely environments, meaning you can shoot night scenes during the day, vice versa, and they're 98% soundproof due to the walls being built four times as thick as your typical wall. Uh, coming up on the left is actually one of our oldest, most historic sound stages, number 12, uh, built in 1928 for the 1920 Mad Musical Broadway. Uh, that comes in at 30,000 square feet, so also our largest. Some really iconic sets have been uh, built inside, and some really iconic scenes as well. See if you recognize any of these. Uh, yeah, take a peek inside the stage doors if they're open, otherwise known as elephant doors. Yeah, actually, back in the day, we used to have pretty much a full suit here on our lot for filming. Uh, yeah, so they had to build those doors with elephants in mind, because they'd actually have to meet them on the sound stages. Uh, so yeah, hence why they are so big. But uh, recently, we have been working on Grand Crew inside of these sound stages, as well as Bel Air. You just grab it wherever you can. So what is you put egg on? Scenes you can film right here. Jamari, what have been your most memorable moments? Oh, I don't know. There's so many to choose from. You know, I don't know before you said the world first enters, and at that moment, his life changes forever. What about you? Well, ooh, the Bel Air Academy gym set is here too, and I remember you having to sit in that cold ice bath for hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was really fun. Sergio, feel my toes. Yeah, but seriously, my favorite part of this line is the talented crew. All together, from hair, wardrobe, makeup, set design, props, and transportation. Yes, yo, know, Transmo is the best. And yeah, it's the smoothest ride for us to play with. Actually, speaking of, if we're gonna get a ride like this, we better go talk to Transmo now and let these people get back to the tour. Yeah, that's how it's gonna be. Talk about the drive. Oh, not at all. I've got Yeah, Bel Air starring Jabari Banks. If you haven't seen the movie, make your way over to Peacock. That is our streaming services. Actually, the television soundstage area. Uh, coming up on the right, the soundstage 16. This is where we've worked on shows like The Jeffersons, Coach, the original Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Uh, shows today as well, like Rutherford Falls, starring Ed Helms on Peacock, or Mindy Kaling's show on Netflix, Never Have I Ever, starring Ed Driver, who's new. Uh, this is where they shoot their interior scenes, but later on in the tour, we'll be seeing some exterior shooting locations as well. Now coming up on the right, also you might get a glimpse at our friends from Illumination Entertainment. Yes, our buddies, the Minions over there. And as you can see, they are clearly hard at work on their rap career. <laughs> Right. Quickly followed by where Ted Danson made his home for a while. Uh, the last sound stage on the right here is where he worked on Mr. Mayor with Bobby Moynihan. And before that, all four interior seasons of The Good Place were shot right there with him and Kristen Bell. Uh, yeah, basically Ted just set up shop with the board and wanted to show him sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name. <laughs> but taking a Ted on your right, moving over to a Ted on your left, you will see our furry friend over there. Uh, he's toasting us with a very dirty routine. He's got a reason to celebrate. I uh, don't know if y'all heard, he got greenlit for his own television show, which we've been working on recently. Also going to be producer Peacock, and brought to us by the mind of Seth MacFarlane. Okay. 
Street. Now continuing on the left hand side, passing by a bunch of buildings, which we refer to as our production bungalows. Actually where our directors, writers, and producers are hard at work. Specifically on pre-production, uh, the first stage of the process where your scripts are getting written, actors are getting cast, budgets are getting finalized, really anything you need to get done before we enter the second phase, the production, and shoot the scenes. So some of the bungalows currently contain Dwayne The Rock Johnson's production company, Seven Bucks Productions. Uh, they have been working on Young Rock. We've also got uh, Amy Pascal's Pascal's Pictures, who you might be Stewart Spider-Man No Way Home. Mark Platt Productions as well, who you might remember from La La Land. Currently they're working on an adaptation of Wicked. Back in the day, these were actually changing rooms for our contract players, which meant actors and actresses like Rock Hudson and Doris Day had to sign contracts to agree they'd only make films with our studio. But since that doesn't exist as much anymore, uh, they slowly became the homes to, to our directors, writers, and producers today. Now, a little further down on the left, passing by probably our most famous bungalow, number 5195. Uh, see if you recognize the silhouette outside this building. It's actually the silhouette of a director who stayed there for a number of years. Oh, Known for films like Vertigo, Hitchcock. The yep. Birds, Psycho. Yeah, that there was he Alfred is. Hitchcock's bungalow. Uh, he became very famous for featuring himself in his own movies, in what we call a cameo. Johnny Carson. Lopez versus Lopez, you My name is Alfred We're about to make our way through our metropolitan sets, which we utilize, you might guess, anytime we need something in a major metropolis. So we've got back alleys, main streets, restaurants, theaters, banks. Uh, yeah, you'll find that all right here. And I'm actually really glad we've been able to make our way through the metropolitan sets today, uh, because for the past few weeks, they've pretty much been closed as we've been working on American Ninja Warrior. Yeah, we'll actually build the obstacle course in this uh, area of our sets and uh, have our ninjas make their way through that course. And after that, we were also working on Quantum Leap in that area, which we are actively filming today as well. So you'll see a little bit later, uh, more of that later on. But yeah, off to the right, you might also recognize our Brownstone Street over there from uh, Home Alone 2, Lost in New York, or from the 2003 Bruce Almighty. Raise the door! I'm in the shower! Ah, it's like we E A U. Why well, yes it is, Bruce, because we are turning the corner on a courthouse square. So all you Back to the Future fans, have your cameras out and ready, because I introduce you all to Hill Valley. Take a look to your left, that is the iconic log tower from the films. Now it looks a little bit different than what you're seeing in the montage and of course what you saw on film. And that is due to the work of our production designers. They are the folks uh, tasked with researching every little detail of a day and age. So from project to another project, these, uh, they can redesign these buildings so they're not recognizable. Specifically when C.B. Out of Rutherford Falls, the show I mentioned earlier with Ed Helms. Yeah, even an abandoned amusement park in Escape from L.A. So you can see just how many times we can take one area and transform it again and again and again. Now, uh, looks like we're leaving the small town behind. We're going to turn the corner onto New York, York Street. And I'd be a little remiss if I didn't let Jimmy Fallon introduce this area himself. Hey, everyone, welcome to New York. I got my start right here, you know, on Saturday Night Live. This is actually my old name. What's that mug over there? An old woman. Oh, wait. Where's my favorite hot dog guy? Hey, buddy. How's it going? Remember me? No. <laughs> Just like old times. Gotta love New York City. I'm Cool guys. I was just, you know, I was just walking it. So it's not exactly New York, but a lot of times when you see New York in the movies, it was shot right here on the Universal Metro sets. If you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. Even if you make it here on the Universal lot. <laughs> Jimmy's correct, but he has made it here. I mean, even the occasional superhero. Uh, Chris Evans ran down the street, barefoot, straight to my heart, Captain America, the first adventure. Uh, we're also working with a multiverse here, y'all, in The Amazing Spider-Man with Andrew Garfield. He has that showdown with the police towards the end of the film. That happened right here on this block. And off to your left, the Lyric Theater you might recognize from Spider-Man 2, uh, when Tobey Maguire was sadly turned down by Kirsten Dunst, when she up a little bit late to her Broadway performance. Uh, yeah, even uh, Jingle All the Way with Arnold Schwarzenegger and Sinbad. Remember that movie? Oh, yeah, and Booster got their start on these streets as well. 
Now, uh, yeah, it looks like we're going to leave the concrete jungle behind, make our way to the real jungles of Skull Island. And then uh, I got my buddy Peter Jackson here to lead the way. Yeah. It's the original King Kong that, that maybe was Yes, that was a reminder, do stay seated during this experience and keep your loved ones close while your loved ones having your cell phones. You will not lose those. <laughs> In that line There's of picture cars, you may see our Jurassic World gyrosphere over there. And if you take a close look at it, you'll notice the glass is missing from it. But there was never glass in the gyrosphere at any point in time. You see, be definitely being a rounded vehicle and glass being a reflective surface, we were going to get our camera in a bunch of the shots during filming. So we left it out. And when we're done with filming, we enter into the final phase known as post-production, where our editors right. come in. Uh, they work their magic with CGI or computer-generated imagery, like what you saw in King Kong 360 3D. So yeah, it's our editors who will actually create that layer of glass from scratch and give it its finalized look. But we could honestly use a gyrosphere where we're headed, folks, because it looks like we're bound for dino territory. We now take you just off the coast of Costa Rica. Coming up on your left and right, you are going to see set pieces and props using the original Jurassic Park trilogy. Uh, one of them, a vehicle coming up on the left-hand side, you'll probably recognize from the second film, The Lost World Jurassic Park, starring Vince Vaughn, Julianne Moore, Jeff Goldblum as well. And I am referring to our mobile lab over here. Now this looks like a pretty big heavy duty vehicle, but in reality it's mainly made of wood, foam, fiberglass, rubber, cheaper to produce, and then we paint it and distress it to make it look like metal. Uh, same case with our cages on the right, which wasn't a good idea, I guess, because the dinosaurs are gone. Uh, oh, kind of it's open. They're actually off shooting a new comedy, uh, so they're probably doing that. I heard they are very talented. So, yeah. Oh. Okay, all right, there they are now. They wanted to show you their spit takes they've been working on. Quick, give them a round of applause. Woo! It's okay if you don't want to throw me a bone. There's a bunch on your left. Anywho, I was talking about the mobile app. I'm going to show you some of the film involving that I call it. So here's Jeff Goldblum inside the bubble. That's way too seriously towards the very tall cliff side. But would you believe that that cliff set right there is actually a parking garage from the front lot? Yeah. Uh, we can even completely transform a garage here. With the work of our greens department, they work with full range of plants. They absolutely cover that building, and boom, they got a brand new shoe. Okay, Jack. Alright, now go back to the cliff and continue to get a bit further. Another element you gotta love is the weather. We love utilizing weather to enhance any kind of emotion that we're looking for. All the rain in the Jurassic Park field is definitely aids in the suspense. Weather that we're looking for here in Southern California. So I thought we'd show you how we get our own and a boom 
right on the cue. There's some thunder and lightning. Uh, the lightning on the left is brought to us by Sword Bones, tucked away on top of the buildings, out of line of sight of our cameras. Uh, missing kind of the big player here. So go ahead, cue that rain for everybody. Awesome. Now that rain is brought to us by some of the most high-tech equipment in the industry, known as sprinklers. They shoot all <laughs> right up into the air. And now, uh, when gravity takes over, as you can see, it brings it back down to Earth with a much more natural look to it. And yeah, there's a whole lot of water, just so it appears well on the screen. Uh, you even have to light that rain from behind, probably, to give it the best shot. Uh, but I think you get the gist. You go ahead and cut the water. Yeah. Okay. Uh, getting word is not working. All the water's now on the way. If you're in a blue seat, you might get Oh, look! They're all blue. Oh, look! Hang on tight. Oh, Hang on tight. 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 Hang on Oh, Paul, buddy, I am sorry, my friend, but Lady Gaga made that, look, made that look a little bit cooler when she shot her music video, Judas, back there as well. Uh, now, off to the left, this area of the Mexico, you might recognize Nacho Libre, starring Jack Black. Or if you're a fan of Westworld from HBO, uh, in the first season, this was part of the town of Araya as well. Mm. But if we're going to talk shows with a Western flair, we should probably make our way to the Old West. So howdy, y'all, and welcome to Six Points. Uh, now, this area got its name when we opened our studio back in the day, because there were six individual streets here that we outfitted all with their own jails, banks, saloons. We would actually shoot six Westerns simultaneously. And we came out with over 200 Westerns in our first year alone. But you might wonder, how does that work with the sound from one set just bleeding across the street into the next? And it did, uh, but when we opened our it's studio, these were silent films, so the noise was completely encouraged. In fact, Carl Emily, our founder, would invite guests in for just 25 cents a piece. You get a box lunch, and you can sit up in these grandstands and set up right here. So you can cheer the heroes, move the villains, literally be right in on the action. Now, of course, uh, we still use these sets today. You might recognize them from Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Quentin Tarantino's nine films, starring Leonardo oh. DiCaprio or Brad Pitt, and uh, Quantum yeah, Leap that I mentioned that's filming today, yeah. also shot in this area recently, too. So be on the lookout for these buildings once you check that out on screen. But uh, I should also mention we're about the halfway point in the tour. So again, if you have any emergencies, you drop something, you choose the restroom, don't forget to pull that cord and sit on down. I'll be back to help. Now, uh, we're just about to leave six points behind. Uh, we're going to make a right up ahead, but take a look off to your left as we do. You're going to see a body of water known as Park Lake, and just behind it sounds stages 30 through 33, which is where we work on shows like the American Song Contest and The Voice. Hey, what's up, Studio Tour? I'm Kelly Clarkson from The Voice, and we shoot our show right here in stage 31, one of the newest stages on the lot, actually, the state-of-the-art sound stages allow us to bring our show to life in the blinds, the lives of everyone yeah, yeah, Kelly Clarkson also works at the Kelly Clarkson show on the front line, so she's quite the busy lady here. Hi, Hi. Hi. Probably my favorite, known as the home of the Beefy Monster. And oh. these are some of our oldest and most versatile sets, called Will Europe. Now, they were originally constructed to be German and all the Western but they've been uh, many different things over the years. You may recognize them as Jim. Diaries 2, a royal engagement. Or you might recognize this area as neighborhood 12358W from The Good Place. Okay. Welcome to The Good Place. You, Eleanor Shellstrom, are dead. This location, the afterlife, come on. I have never ever seen this. You're in The Good Place. I'm not supposed to be here. I can't risk going to the bad place. <laughs> Maybe it's not all that bad. But... <laughs> You. What is the bad place like? Well, it doesn't sound awesome. Well, congratulations. Y'all looks like you made it to the good place. <laughs> we and did yet, it. If you haven't seen this four-season NBC comedy, I cannot recommend it enough. But if you have seen it, take a look up the street here. You might recognize the fountain used throughout the series. Love when it was a chowder fountain. 
And uh, the building right behind me here, with the blue door, blue windows, red trimmings, was the yogurt, yogurt, yogurt shop. You may have just seen it in that last clip. Now you'll notice the signage is gone. Uh, we are always in a state of flux here from one project to the next. So always get ready for our next big uh, show or television. Words are hard, y'all. Uh, come back tomorrow. I'll do colors and shapes. Very exciting. Uh, but anywho, going to go back a little bit. I also mentioned this is the home of the movie monster. So from the 30s to the 50s, we were known as the movie monster studio. So Dracula, the Wolfman, the Invisible Man, Frankenstein's monster, the Bride of Frankenstein, Hunchback of Notre Dame, uh, the Mummy, they all got their start right here on these cobblestones. And actually, off to your right over there, a lot of them shot their scenes right over there into what we call the Court of Miracles. Honestly, a uh, little bit of a miracle, though, that Boris Karloff, who played Frankenstein's monster, got any work done, uh, considering all the ordeals he had to go through on set. Believe it or not, he had to be there almost every day by four in the morning to do four to six hours of makeup application. Then his suit weighed 50 pounds. So during the production, he lost 20 pounds in sweat alone. Yeah, then he had to do 10 to 12 hour day shoots, two more hours of makeup removal, and if this is not enough of the poor guy, uh, again, our founder, Carl Emily, was so about the secrecy of this movie that he had Boris Karloff head to and from set with a canvas sack pulled over his head. But I mean, hey, it paid off. Uh, Boris Karloff became an international star practically overnight. I mean, the amount of films uh, that this movie spawned and Boris Karloff was actually not the first actor offered the role of Frankenstein's monster. Originally, it was offered to a man known as Bela Lugosi, mm -hmm. uh, who some may know famously as Dracula. Yeah, he already had his foot in the realm of monsters, so they decided to approach him with the opportunity first. And he said, yeah, thank you so much. Laugh in his face. Yeah, his portrayal of Frankenstein's monster was so far removed from what they were looking for, they basically laughed him out of the room. I mean, at this point, Bella Lugosi blows up. He says, you know what, fine. If you don't want me for this role, you can get any extra to do this role. So they took his advice. Uh, and that is how they found Boris Karloff, who was just an extra at the time. I mean, can you imagine being Bella Lugosi and passing up such an iconic character? I mean, sure, he didn't know it at the time. But then he has to sit back and he gets to play bit characters like Igor in the subsequent films that it spawned. But thank goodness, finally, Bella got his chance to portray our lovely we're actually making our way inside the lower section, but yeah, there is a full city street level up above us. And uh, we're actually making our way onto a hot set. They're working on a current project in here, but not today. So we're lucky enough to sneak our way inside. Uh, so as a reminder, please do stay seated. Don't want y'all hopping out, moving any set pieces or props around. Uh, but yeah, let's uh, try to figure out what they're working on in here. So we're in a subway. Uh, not like the restaurant, you know, like a subway subway. Uh, we got the Amarco Plaza. That is a sign for the Pacific Express. Okay, uh, looks like they're doing a project in San Francisco. You can tell because there's a poster over on the right here. It says, Welcome to San Francisco. Uh, over on the left, you're seeing that blue box. With the okay, whoa. Uh, you can find a blue box over into one of our normal Southern California trucks. We get them all the time.
all right, I fibbed a little bit. There was not a current production happening inside there. Uh, that whole experience was designed after the 1974 film Earthquake. But Chad and I are about to bring you all one year into the future. It's 1975. The director, Steven Spielberg, and the Jaws. film is Jaws. Folks, we're making our way to Amity Island. Oh my. Now, I should also Go remind to you, Amity. that's also going to be starting the quiet zone, where I have to hop off the mic for just a little bit. So have fun. Talk amongst yourselves. Take photos. Take videos. Yeah. So here we go. There he is. <laughs> Oh, we got eaten. See the blood? He took the pier, just like in the movie. Oh, that's the, the shark that they found, and they thought they had caught it, remember? All the 20 fishermen, they're like, we got the shark. Thank <laughs> you. 
covered it earlier, but we have collected so many over the years, we can't show them all to you in just one place. So take a look off to your right. You might recognize a few more. For Can't example, we got drive. the red double-decker bus using Arrested Development in the town of Weebrin. Just in front of it, that yellow and black Camaro. Look at these! Transformer movies! It looks like he's avoiding that Decepticon police car, though, so we'll even be out of one of his cover. There's the piano <laughs> car from Oh Brother, Where Are Thou? And, you know, on the note of uh, picture cars, make sure you go chest uh, check out Fast X or Fast 10. Come to theaters on May 19th, starring Vin Diesel, who you might recognize from films such as The Fast and the Furious, too Fast, Too Furious, Fast and Furious, Tokyo Drift, Fast and Furious, that's the fourth one. You get the gist. Uh, we're going to make our way off the highway now, much like Mary and Crane once did, to find ourselves a little out of the way motel. Oh, the Bates Motel. Yes, folks. Welcome to the Bates Motel and Psycho House from the 1960 Alfred Hitchcock film Psycho. Right. Anthony Perkins and Janet Wow. There's the house. And there he is now, so maybe he can come over and say hi to all of us. Hey, Norman, you got a second? You want to say hi to my friends? You are clearly going through something. <laughs> That's my fault. He's helping another guest out right now. All I'll do is then finish checking them out. Uh, yeah, this guy's always hard at work. Pretty close with his mom, too, which is sweet to see, you know? Look at him. Oh, my gosh. Look how sweet that is. He's helping her in the car. You don't get service like that anymore, you know? Car's trunk. Okay, Mr. Right. that situation. Uh, hey, Norman, you know, look, it's okay, I'm gonna make them delete their TikToks, right, y'all? We're gonna delete our TikToks, we're gonna pretend we didn't see anything. Norman, Norman, no, no, Norman, it was nice to see you. Go away now, please. Oh, okay. Get the guy in the last car, who hasn't been laughing at jokes, I warned them earlier. I'm sorry, come on, There's the house up there. Um, buddy, it's okay, we all go a little mad sometimes, all right? Look, we should be safe, as long as he doesn't take those stairs over here. This was built in 1959 for the 1960 film, originally just as a facade, uh, but for the subsequent films that it's bought, they finished the rest of the house. Oh, yeah. Yeah, really cool this house is still standing, especially considering what happened just behind it. Because uh, we now enter onto the crash site from Steven Spielberg's 2005 film, War of the Worlds, starring Tom Cruise and Dakota Fanning. Yeah, take a look around. That is a real 747 Boeing airplane purchased and destroyed just for this film. And over a hundred tons of debris were brought in to create the scene. But let's hear a little bit more from Spielberg and the team themselves. For the world. is a perfect example of a set that is all designed around a vision that Stephen had. He said, again, yeah, we'll sit down and talk about the world. Well, that thought of the 747 goes down right in the big room. Because it's, it's just something you don't see. You're doing good. You're doing good. Keep pressing me. I said, come back. Listen, I want you to close your eyes, okay? Okay, I'm closed. Okay. Okay. Robbie, get in. Huh? Oh, get in. Now I uh, should mention, uh, we are just about 15 minutes out from returning to the theme park, so one final reminder, if you need any assistance, feel free to pull that cord and sit on down, I'll be back to help you. But yeah, our friends at War of the Worlds here saw some pretty interesting occurrences during that film. They were definitely not the only ones, because our next stop here on the tour is Jupiter's Claim, the amusement park in the middle of the Santa Clarita Valley from Jordan Peele's newest film, Nope, starring Dana Kaluuya and Kiki Palmer. Let's hear a little bit more from the man, Jordan Peele. Movie magic only happens when a team of collaborators, often in the hundreds, work together to take an impossible mission and bring it to me. This is Jupiter's plan. The establishment small time Southern California amusement park owned by former child star Ricky G. Park. Over there, look into the winking left and have your picture taken just like the kids in that old 90s movie kid share. <laughs> That's what this whole place is loosely based on. Remember that one? No? Why? A little further down, you can see the brand new Star Lasso experience. Built to showcase an unbelievable new live show. It's not looking so live. Anyway, behind this model is a gold rush frontier town. It's a 
the smack dab in the center around when I say over the past few years I have seen some pretty crazy stuff here on the back lot. So much so that apparently now I'm an undercover witness. Surprise! And international criminal Owen Chell has been after me for a little while. Look, the only reason I'm telling you this is because Chad just let me know he's hot on my trail so we need to take a little detour, okay? Uh, we're going inside Sullivan's garage behind me here. Uh, there's a team of people inside willing to help me get through this situation. They're actually all helping as well. They're serving as distractions for Shaw. So in case they ask, your name is Billy now too. Do stay seated. I don't know what we're in store for, but we're about to find out. Hello? Anybody in here? That's a cool car. Uh, I was told to report in in case there was in any trouble. This is Billy. Hello? and drinks up ahead. old-fashioned people here. Oh, Scooby-Doo's down there. What? See Scooby-Doo and the mystery machine. Oh, yeah.
I don't know if he's a real chef or a character walking around the chef. Oh, oh it's Beetlejuice! I need a picture of Beetlejuice. Yes, you do. He's got to see Beetlejuice. Where? Right there. there. Go on over. I'll take. I'll text it to you because it'll be a better picture. his job. He's the bio-exorcist, remember? <laughs> well, there's a line for Scooby. Oh my. We'll just wave past. A Frankenstein. Frankenstein's monster's over there. Where? Over there. Over here. Hey, Scoob. Right over here. Oh. Let me get you. He's like, please save me. You have to take me to my camera. Okay. Yeah, I won't get the one with the other one. No, I have it on the phone. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll text you to you. That's his job. He's a monster. Wait, I don't have any movies to be in. Oh no, there's no problem. Oh, Julie, false promises. And Julie. <laughs> Do you know where that Woody is? I don't know where Woody Woodpecker is. Uh, Scooby Doo's across the street. Beetlejuice is around the corner.
picture. Thank you. <laughs> Let's see who's around the corner. Is this really a place to eat? I think it is. Is this a place? I think this is. It is. Do you eat in or eat out? Yeah, it's tables. Okay. Here come Despicable Me and the Minions. There's the subway. Here's an Irish pub. Where? Right here. I think it's a real place. I think it's a real place. Here's the secret life of pets. How about the secret life of food? I know. <laughs> Here's ice cream. The minions are here. There must be something over there. Yeah. Yeah. Tour de France. Le Bistro de Rizzo. Chanson Couture. It's like a nice little place. Just bring them a high chair. He's scared of her. He's scared of her. He's scared of her. Welcome to Hogwarts. Platform nine and three quarters. Hogsmeade Station. Good morning or good afternoon. Here's your butter beer. Thank you. They're trying out their wands. There's honey dukes, sweets. Exactly. People, well, you can get butter beer ice cream, you can get it ice, you can get it all sorts of things. Oh, I've already seen two restrooms in the same land. There's Ollivanders where you buy your wands.
<laughs> oh, there it is. But they should like Wise Acres wizarding equipment. Oh, see the Weasley's car that got eaten by the tree outside? What kind of warnings am I? without an accident. The secret ingredient is baby Maggie's cough syrup. Still the symptoms. Mmm. That's good. Try some. Mmm. Go for it. Tastes like baby Maggie's cough syrup. Mm. Tastes like orange juice. That's good. Tastes like high syrup. There you go. That's what it tastes like. I see. Here we are at the comic book store. Oh, oh, you all right? She? Yep. <laughs> There's Luigi's Pizza. You haven't lost me yet. Tour de France, yep. There's Harry Potter. You should try some more of this, see if it clears your throat. What makes it bubble up like that? Um, Nice. 
Those are the real Hollywood Hills behind these buildings. Studios Hollywood. Have a great day. Okay. Frankenstein Parker. Okay. Okay. We should have done that before we have to go. We probably don't have time. Oh, okay. Here we go. Here's the last escalator. Oh, I'm gonna miss you so much. <laughs> Goodbye, escalator. Restrooms on level seven. Uh -oh. oh, there we go. Thank you. You know, I saw that Simpsons shirt, best, uh, best uh, vacation ever shirt. And I was thinking about it, and I touched it, and I just didn't like the fabric that it was on. It was like a flimsy fabric that I said, I'll wear this once, or I'll leave it in the drawer. Here we are at the Frankenstein parking garage. See you later, folks. Ride, share, drop off, connect to Wi-Fi. <laughs> it's catching a bus. Okay.